This is, for what it's worth, the world's first Mary Worth podcast. Sam and Eric use coarse language, and if you are offended by coarse language, please save yourself some trouble and cover your ears. the darkness of future past, the magician longs to see, one chance out between two worlds, fire, walk, with four what it's worth, the world's first and only Merryworth podcast. My name's Sam. And I'm Eric. We've taken the show on the road yet again. Yep, we have so much money we don't know what to do with. We're going on vacation. We've, uh, we got up early this morning, we packed our ten trillion dollars into one big suitcase. Yep, it's huge. Uh, we're going to have to check that bag. <laughs> no way that's going on carry-on. Uh, new we. <laughs> new, uh, sir. New. Hey, yo. And we flew up uh, to a, a nice little town in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, small community. And they've got this beautiful hotel, the Great Northern. Oh, it's, it's lovely. It's wonderful. It's got, uh, we've... they got these murals on, on the walls. It's, oh, it's so nice. Uh, the trees up here, well... What kind of tree is that, even? I don't, smells... I don't even know. We're going to have to ask one of the locals. Um, I think I heard one of them mention it was a, a Douglas fir. Oh, okay, uh, cool. We've uh, we've rented three rooms. We've rented um, a room for Eric, a room for me, and a room for the money. Yep. Uh, it, it's kind of like the, the money room is just one big ball pit, and we go in there and waller around mm-hmm. and throw money at each other. And yep. Dollar fight! <laughs> And uh, uh, and I need the uh, my own room because I I like to hang upside down in my uh, uh, closet for exercise. Oh I, right, I have right. one of those exercise poles that you you hook your feet onto. Yeah, yeah, naturally. Um, and, and then he calls me and uh, he he says to me, Sam, I am currently upside down. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, What are you talking about, you idiot? But uh. <laughs> Oh boy, so we're having some fun. Yeah, it's a pretty nice place. Um, it's a, there's a roadhouse out on the edge of town. Yep. This red stage where a woman sings a creepy song. <laughs> it's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty groovy. Uh, <laughs> so, um, well, are we gonna do a Mary Worth thing that we do? Uh, yeah, might as, might as well. It, it, it always starts out where we, where we just start recording ourselves talking to one another and recapping what's going on in our lives, even though we both already know what we've been yes. doing together. Although and, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna level with you. I, I I didn't get much sleep last night. That uh, choir or whatever would shut up in the other room. Are you talking about those Norwegian guys? Yeah, I don't know what what was with that. I don't know. Uh, there are these, like, big-ass Norwegian Viking dudes staying at the hotel, and all night long they were drinking and singing and stomping their feet. What a ruckus. Um, but let's, let's, let's see if we can do this thing. Yeah, let's see if we can, we can handle this podcast thing that we do. Uh, so what happened last week in Mary Worth, Eric? I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> I blanked it out. Last week in Mary Worth, um, Dawn talked to Mary. I think that's yep. what happened. Mary tried to convince her to work, uh, volunteer work. Oh, volunteer work at the department store that, uh, her father owns. <laughs> the, the department store that Wilbur owns. Yeah, she's working at, at the uh, perfume counter. Um. Wait, so no, that- no. Oh, oh wait. At, the, at the hospital. You know, that's always been a problem for me, is that I get perfu- perfume counters in department stores and hospitals confused. Yeah, because they smell so similar. 
that time I uh that time I sprained my ankle and showed up at Macy's and they didn't know what to do for me. God bless you. <laughs> I fractured my leg. Oh. <laughs> do you have anything that smells like cherry wood? <laughs> and they started spraying perfume on my on my open wound. And, oh, that didn't go well. Oh, that was a stinger. Uh, oh, gee, that smarts. Uh, so, so, so this week, um, the Monday's comic happens. Yep. Dawn gets ready for a day of firsts. First day back to school, Dad. I should be home in time to make dinner. I'll be at the hospital a few hours after class. Hey, how's she doing there? With the water in her mouth. She's, uh, she's practicing her ventriloquism <laughs> act. Oh, wow. That is not even Wilbur speaking. He doesn't have a line in this panel. It's just Dawn throwing <laughs> her voice. <laughs> I am sure you can hang out, school work, and volunteer for duty at my show. Um, what exactly does one do when they volunteer at a hospital? This is a serious yeah. question, because I don't know. Uh, like, I imagine reading to the blind. Uh, empty bed pans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, pass out food or pills or something? Yep. Uh, you put on one of those weird circle things on your forehead that are all shiny and reflective. And then oh, you, yeah. Um, and then you make jokes, like uh, Patch Adams. Oh, you you cut an enema bulb in half and put it on the end of your nose. Yep. And uh, you go around making kids laugh, and then you um you get yourself a, a swimming pool full of spaghetti and dunk an old lady in it. Yep. That's what you do. Patch Adams on VHS. You can buy it today. Yep. Welcome to the uh, Rob Williams uh, fan cast. <laughs> yeah. Last week it was Mrs. Doubtfire. This week Patch Adams. Next week Bicentennial Man. Also, what? What the hell is wrong with Wilbur? What? He can't make dinner? <laughs> Eric, if there's anything... He has to rely on, on his, like, like 20-year-old daughter to make dinner for him. <laughs> it's better than letting Wilbur try to do it himself. Yeah, Wilbur used to try, but he ends up just making... Like, <laughs> he burns the uh, Kraft macaroni and cheese on the stove and... He he just goes into the couch with a st stick of butter and some pretzel rods, <laughs> and he just kind of scrapes butter off the top of the stick of butter with a pretzel rod and eats it. Mm. This is cooking. Mm, <laughs> my favorite. Uh, he managed to, to melt a uh, Stouffer's lasagna in the, in the microwave. <laughs> well, actually, he tried to, he tried to put it in the oven, and uh, yeah, that didn't work out so well. Uh, those cabinets behind Wilbur have just been replaced. They used to have carbon scoring all over them from where they started <laughs> a humongous fire. Because he tried to cook, um, he tried to cook, uh, one of those pot pies that you can get in the toaster. I don't need to get the oven out for this. <laughs> I'll be getting college credits for volunteering. I'll make it work. Make it work, Tim Gunn. Okay. Um, question. Has Wilbur taken back the helm of Ask Wendy, or is he just sitting around at home all yeah, day I don't now? Think, I don't think he's doing anything. <laughs> and also, mm -hmm. is he still getting a paycheck for Ask Wendy while Mary is uh, volunteering? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Because <laughs> this whole thing is suspect. It just looks like... Dawn's getting up and she's ready to start her day and Wilbur's just sat his ass no, down no, in the no. kitchen. I'm working on my, my articles on uh, how, how I survived. Remember? <laughs> and then uh, as soon as Dawn's out the door, Wilbur just goes into the bathroom and shuts off the lights and sits in there <laughs> for a few hours. He <laughs> just uh, hums to himself. <laughs> he's flicking the lights on and off and he's saying, <laughs> Bloody Mary, I've got your baby. <laughs> trying to freak himself out. And, and then he tried doing that once, and then Mary Worth uh, appeared in the mirror, <laughs> and they all freaked out, so he stopped doing that. And then the phone rang, and it was Mary, and she said, Don't toy with things you don't <laughs> understand, Wilbur. <laughs> this, 
this was a warning. <laughs> Wilbur just dropped the phone. He dropped the uh, phone rec receiver right into the toilet. <laughs> 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 and that, that was that was a costly mistake. He he never did that. Try doing that again. It, black magic is not Wilbur's forte. <laughs> All right, Tuesday. Tuesday. After orientation at the hospital for volunteers. Dot dot dot. First day back to school, first day working at the hospital, finally some first food of the day! <laughs> yes, finally some first food of the day. Is that like some kind of, uh, regional saying? Well, you know, you know what they say, Eric, that first food of the day is the most important meal. That, that, that's like, uh, uh, that's a something they say in Ohio. They say, oh, time for, hey, you know. Some breakfast, you know. Some first food of the day. Ha <laughs> ha, you know. You get it. Uh, some first food of the day keeps the doctor away? Is, yep. <laughs> is that the phrase? Yep, that's how it goes. Uh, speaking of doctors, Gordon Freeman, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Gordon. <laughs> is she volunteering at Black Mesa? Also, there's an odd, like, yellow skin man with a, uh, with a balding head in the background there. <laughs> uh... With a potato-shaped head. Or a Who doesn't have any legs. Yep. So, oh, wait, that's the back of a lady's head. Never mind. Yeah, Eric. Did you think it was some pear-shaped man? You yep, silly I goose. did. You silly goose. Uh, a day of firsts all around. Are there any other firsts for me around the corner? Yeah, first time meeting some shadow men. <laughs> They're emerging from the woods, <laughs> stalking people throughout the streets of, uh, um, I almost said Silent Hill, but that's not where this takes place. <laughs> yeah, close enough. Close enough. But yeah, they just kind of, kind of came through a crack in the wall. Uh, they've, been, they've been following Dawn all day, but she hasn't noticed. Dawn turns around and one of them's kind of like, crouching back behind her bed and his face <laughs> turns into an owl. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hmm. Did she borrow this suit from Mary Worth? Because this looks like a very merry thing to wear. Yeah, I think I don't think she has any, like, dress clothes or anything. It, it's a nice pantsuit with a pearl necklace and a turtleneck. A mock turtle. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're looking good, Dawn. Uh, should that milk be refrigerated? Yeah, probably. When, oh, September 11th comic. Hmm. Never forget. Never forget to read Mary Worth on September 11th. Never forget to finally get some first food of the day. <laughs> so, Wednesday. Wednesday. This is like the cafeteria in school. Having a late lunch doesn't make it easier to get a seat. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, Don, you were such a mess in high school. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, remember when I did some, uh, investigative, yep. uh, some investigations into the life of Don West, and it turns out that she was, uh, she was a fat little girl. <laughs> she was basically, <laughs> she was basically Minnie, uh, Wilbur with, uh, long hair. <laughs> uh, for some reason, though, when I pictured Dawn, uh, when she was in high school, I picture her as being like a fat goth girl. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> she's like got pimples all over her face and she's wearing black lipstick and black eyeshadow and she's standing out behind the cafeteria and she's holding a cigarette but she's not brave enough to smoke it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, it looks like uh, Gina Black is uh, there at the hospital. Yeah, what the hell? What is she doing here? I'd know that ponytail anywhere. Oh, she's she's run run away from her husband. And she, she's run off with Geraldo, who's standing there behind yeah. her. <laughs> on the wedding. <laughs> oh no, a scandal! Oh, no. oh well, let's get to the next panel before we uh uh <laughs> get involved in this. Look, oh, this no. is none of our business. We're gonna keep our noses out of it. Aha! A seat for me. This is my lucky day. Uh, <laughs> Is this how, like, normal people think? Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, you know what would explain a lot is if there was a gas leak in the Weston household. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
she, she's actually saying all this out loud as well as <laughs> thinking it. <laughs> Have you seen that new volunteer? She just walks around all day saying everything that comes into her head out loud. First food of the day? I don't know what the hell that even means. She's just comparing everything to her old school and... I don't know. Oh man, who, who do you think of this guy? This guy is sitting down. <laughs> this guy's sitting down. <laughs> no, I said, um, who, do you, who do you think it is, I said. Oh, who do I think it is? I thought you said, what do you think of this guy? <laughs> He's sitting down. <laughs> that's pretty cool. He's oh, sitting yeah? down. He has a, has a sandwich. That's, that's pretty awesome, too. He's somewhere between prone and upright. I'll call this sitting. <laughs> he is at rest, certainly. Um, I don't seems, know. seems to have an interesting characteristic there. Uh, uh, I already knew about this guy uh, earlier. Uh, yeah. I was speaking to a friend of mine who, uh, who's been hanging around the hotel. He oh. said that a one-armed, a mysterious one-armed man has been spotted at the hospital. This is my friend, uh, uh, Deputy Hawk. Oh, cool. He's yeah, I met that guy. He's pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah, he's a tall Indian fellow. He works for the sheriff's station. He's a police officer, an officer of the law. Man, you know, those Indians, they know they're curry. Uh, anyway. <laughs> they do. I am Thursday. Thursday. How was that for a segue? Is this seat taken? Now it is by you. <laughs> Help yourself. <laughs> oh, I don't know about you, man, but I think this guy is going to be a real cut up. Oh, man. He's a real. He's a real crack up. My sides are splitting. Mine too. That was a, that was a, it's a good a thing. Clever, good joke. Good thing we're at the hospital. <laughs> because your sides are splitting open and your intestines are leaking out. And I need some sutures. Just some sutures, though. That's it. Yep, that's it. No, no actual stitches. Hey, hey my name's Jim. My name's Dawn! Oh, do I smell a romance blooming? Uh, uh, I think, uh, I think, um, something might be stirring around here. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's, uh, there's music swelling in the background. We know these two are in love. First sight. Either it's gonna be romance or the, this guy's gonna sell on some shoes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure, sure which. The FBI, an FBI agent and the sheriff of the town are going to kick in the door to his motel room and point a gun at him. And then the <laughs> bumbling deputy's gun is going to go off by accident. <laughs> um, so, Friday? Friday? Is that what we do? Is that the yep. day after Thursday from now on? How do you like? Being a hospital volunteer. I just started today. <laughs> and look at these exciting meals that they're eating here. A glass of water, a bowl of something. White rice. Bowl of white rice. And a sandwich on what on Wonder Bread. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh man. It's, it's probably it's probably just like plain tuna salad. And they didn't even put enough <laughs> They didn't even put enough mayonnaise on it. <laughs> so it's just kind of stringy. It's like cat food. <laughs> you know, I've seen some of that hospital food, and man, it looks gross. It's like a bunch of like orange and green, like liquids on a on a metal tray. I don't know, man. Um, I've seen some good hospital food too. <laughs> the thing is, uh, hospital food doesn't stick me out so much because it's just a step above school food. Yes. <laughs> Um, Dawn looks down at her plate, and she says, um, I said I didn't want any creamed corn. <laughs> and then she looks over at a boy standing in the corner. <laughs> in, a, in a tuxedo. <laughs> in a tuxedo. And my grandson practices magic. <laughs> and, and then she looks back down, and the cream corn's gone, and so is the boy. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> what? 
This hospital's uh, no good. Uh, and so far, so good! I wish I could say the same. I'm here at the hospital. Not a volunteer. Uh, he's being held there against his will. <laughs> Why? Okay. These people have just met. Yeah. Seconds ago. Uh huh. <laughs> and all of a sudden, by the way, good for you volunteering, but I'm a patient, you selfish bitch. <laughs> like, uh <-huh. laughs> like he's pleasant up until then. Hmm. <laughs> Have you no shame? Like he, I see you keep looking at my buttoned up sleeve here, you bitch. Want me to unbutton? So you can get a good look. Yeah, you want to see the nub? You, uh -huh. you fucking whore. What? Why? We, you just gonna say anything about it, huh? I don't want to have an arm. Who gives a shit? Like, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to make conversation. Yeah, you shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> I lost my fucking arm. You're not gonna ask me how I'm doing. I like this guy. Yeah, me too. He's got. He's got. He's got uh, Passion for one thing. Oh yeah. Um, has he? Ta he's not taking a bite out of his sandwich. He's just kind of waving it around. I can't wait to see what else he has up his sleeve. <laughs> oh, good one, Eric. Uh, I had to give you a hand for that one. <laughs> yes. Wait. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> There's some jokes about hands and arms. Uh, this guy's got a very disarming. Personality. Yes, he does. <laughs> oh, <hey> oh. <laughs> oh, Saturday. Saturday. Is that what you want to do? I had several surgeries now, and I'm going through physical therapy. Dawn's gently rubbing her sandwich against her lips, and he's gesturing as if, like, like oh, for what? <laughs> what are you going for physical therapy for? I, I, I don't. I don't understand. Can you make a gesture that'll explain that? Um, oh, as oh, you can see here... You're missing an arm. I get it. I think he's faking it, because there's very clearly an elbow in that sleeve. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's just pulled his hand inside of his sleeve. Yeah, he just has it inside of his shirt. And he has, like, a prosthetic thing to make it look like it. <laughs> he's got, like, a bigger chest. And he actually does. <laughs> Yep, Dawn's just kind of shoving her bologna sandwich into, into her face. She's just pressing it against mm -hmm. her lips. I think this is a seduction technique. She's that's, like, how, that's how she likes to eat her sandwiches. And she likes to lick all the muscle out between the uh, the bread and the meat uh, first. <laughs> She's just got mustard all over her, the, the corners of her lips afterwards. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's something she picked up from Wilbur. This is like a really bad habit of his. That's how he eats sandwiches. <laughs> he puts like uh, a bunch of mayonnaise and mustard on his sandwich and he just, just licks it from the outside in. She says, uh, Hey, Jim, you ever seen a woman who can eat a sandwich like a spider? Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's very attractive. I'm, I'm sure that all men would be into... Watching a woman eat a sandwich from the inside out. Mmm. All right, next fam. My face is getting flushed just thinking about it. <laughs> my doctors tell me I'm doing well, considering my steps. But there's a lot going on that they can't see. Like, what's going on with my beautiful hair? Mm, <laughs> look at these luxurious locks. Dawn. These, these golden waves of beautiful hair. What a handsome stud. I'm much too pretty to be missing an arm. <laughs> my my luxurious hair distracts from my missing arm. <laughs> um, what? Uh, there's probably something going on that uh that he can't see. That means he's crazy. Uh -huh. He's completely lost his fucking mind as well as his arm. Yes. <laughs> uh, 
he was lying when he said that he's going through physical therapy. He's just wandered off the mental patient floor. <laughs> <laughs> Any minute now, he's going to pick up one of those trays and just beat Dawn over the head with it until she's in a coma. <laughs> he's a, he's a, a, a war uh, veteran, but he just went completely crazy when he was in service. <laughs> and also lost lost his arm. <laughs> he lost his arm after he got back because he was crazy. Yes. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's what happens when you lose your mind, isn't it? Your body parts start falling off. Yep. Yeah. I'm a doctor. Um, Sunday. Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Each friend represents a world and us a world possibly not born until they arrive. And I... And, 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 and. That's a really, uh, Mysterious saying there. Yeah, that's a that's a good saying. I like it. It's about friendship, Eric. It is. Does is your world born? Um, wait. When you're not around, when we're not hanging out. Yes, it is. It totally is. Or do you just stop existing? Or wait, maybe <laughs> maybe I stop existing. Oh no. Ah! Volunteer duty brings me to the hospital today. And perhaps something else. <laughs> <laughs> if you know what I mean. Oh, wait, go <laughs> Get a little saucy in here. Mm. Um, have you noticed that Mount View Hospital looks almost exactly like Charterstone? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, the first time I read this comic, I thought it was Charterstone for a minute, but I was like, wait. No, that doesn't make any sense. They're at the hospital. <laughs> and then I read the sign. Maybe, uh, oh. um, Joe, just, uh, anytime he needs to draw a building, he looks out, out his window over his drafting table, and he's like, eh, just draw this place across the street. <laughs> Put a sign on it so it's, a different, <laughs> so it's a different place. Santa Royale's just made up of all these massive orange buildings yep. that all look the same. That are surrounded by, you know... You've got palm trees in the back. You've got some tall fir trees. Yep, just, like the fir trees. Um, plant life of all kinds. Just throw some plants in there. It's, but yeah, Dawn, get, get your mind out of the gutter. Let's keep going. Dawn meets a new friend in the hospital cafeteria on the first day of her volunteer shift. I lost my arm several months ago in an accident. And you're doing physical therapy now! <laughs> yeah, it's like, I was attacked by a man named Bob. <laughs> Do you know him? Yeah, he, uh, he climbed right over the couch, <laughs> came right at me, and I started screaming. And then, uh, then I became friends with a little person. <laughs> but that's not, not important. Uh, yes. Eventually, I'll be fitted with a prosthetic as a replacement. Though I passed through a gate of no return, so to speak. <laughs> I think that Dawn's going to get along well with this guy, because he's got the same personal space problems that Wilbur does. Yes. <laughs> Back off, buddy. Um, oh, I've got a line. I understand, Jim. I too have gone through some. <coughs> mm, sorry, I had something stuck in my throat. Uh, I understand, Jim. I too have gone through a traumatic experience recently. <laughs> dot dot dot. And I know how one incident can change your life forever. <laughs> Wait, is Dodd saying that? Or is the dark skin guy in the background saying that? <laughs> He's just standing back there talking and Hey uh and I know what needs me can change your life forever. He's he's just piping in. He overheard the conversation going on, figured he'd jump in, make a new friend with the one armed man. Yep. Um there on the right side, uh Moy and Julia this way. Yep, the uh, the Moy and Julia. A uh, wing. <laughs> it's over, over there to the left. <laughs> oh, um, so is that what we got? Is that Sunday? I guess that's that's it. Wow. 
Oh, what a journey we've been on this week. Feels like my my arms have been bent back backwards. Oh, so so <laughs> straining. Um, but I heard that gum you likes coming back in style. So oh. there's some good news. Oh, thank God! I've been waiting for that. <laughs> it's that gum that like has the uh, juice. In the Mm. Gum that has juice in the middle. Are you making yeah. this up? No, there used to be gum back in like the, the 90s. It was like, they used to like burst out with like a, li a liquid center. That sounds hideous. It was the worst. <laughs> oh. Mm. So, um, predictions. What, what's going to happen next week? Um, well, I think this guy's going to frown some more about his arm. But what I think. I think Don is going to help him with his uh, physical therapy. Well, she is volunteering after all. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think that... I think you're being far, far too optimistic with the way that Mary Worth has been going. I'm saying at least two more weeks sat here at this table while these two talk about how horrible their lives have been lately. Hmm. I think she's going to deal with that woman in the coma. Right, yeah. yeah um, um, Ronette Polanski, is that her name? Yep. I'm just going to find a, a, a letter under her fingernail. Like, hmm, what's that all about? RBT. Um, I'll have to ask my friend Lucy at the sheriff's station to think of all the words you can spell with R, B, and T. A real big tomato. Oh, yeah, it could be, a. it could be that. It could be, um... Delicious. Real big truck. <laughs> Don's not very good at figuring out riddles. <laughs> um, it could be uh, they're trying to spell ribbit and a frog. Yes. Uh, put Ronette Polanski in a, in a coma. Because <laughs> you know how frogs are with putting girls in comas. Uh -huh. uh, so, uh, what was your worthy moment of the week this week, Eric? Uh, I think, uh, I think I have two. Uh, one of my favorite worthy moments of the week is when, uh, that one character took a, 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 a inflated football and threw it all the way through a forest. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that part was pretty good this week. I like that. And it, uh, it, <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> and it landed on the hood of Bobby's car. Yep. Uh -huh. Um, I also like the part where, where Dale and, uh, Dale and Harry are on a stakeout and, uh, and Dale has his, has his little, uh, train whistle and he, and he toots on it and then gives Harry a, a thumbs up. <laughs> that, that, that was a pretty good moment this week. Yeah, uh, um, one of my, uh, my worthy moment of the week, um, would probably be when, um, when Agent Cooper is uh, describing his dream to uh, Diane on the voice recorder. And yes. he says, uh, Last night I had a dream I was trying to eat a very large and tasteless gumdrop. And it turns out that he was chewing on one of his earplugs in his yes. sleep. <laughs> <laughs> that was that a great was, moment this week. Yeah, that was a great moment in Mary Worth this week. I also liked when that, that little person started da dancing around. Let's rock! And then he starts boogieing. Oh, that's pretty fun. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, this Good is a Good stuff. This is a great comic and I love it. And I love when they put like like dozens and dozens of donuts down on a table during their meetings. <laughs> oh, that, that's weird. There's that part where Cooper's walking through the sheriff station and everybody he runs into has a big mouthful of donut. <laughs> and, three uh, for three. <laughs> yeah, he walks in and Truman's eating a donut and he goes, Oh, I'm three for three. <laughs> that's the same scene where he also says um what is it uh i'm sorry but i need to interrupt this because i badly have to urinate <laughs> <laughs> and then walks out of the room oh boy oh, Merry so yeah Worth, good week everybody Merry great week Worth. great week yeah one of my favorites um so are we gonna kiss some people now yeah let's switch them up Let's, hey, let's let's call this segment that we do Sam and Eric's Kissing Booth. <laughs> sure. Let's do that. <laughs> you pay us a dollar, we'll give you a kiss. 
First off, I'd like to thank Angelo Badalamenti for uh, writing our theme song. It's called the Twin Peaks theme. Uh, you can find it on the album uh, soundtrack from Twin Peaks. There you go. It's a good song. It's one of my yep. favorites. It always makes me feel quite happy when I hear it. Also, for our closing music, I'd like to thank Harold Arlen and Ted Kohler for their song, Get Happy. Yep. Um, we play that at the end of the show every week. This is um, this is absolutely not a change of form at all from what we usually do. Um, on uh, Facebook, Bria was the only one who uh, liked the post. Yep, that's mm. it. That's it. So thanks, Everyone Bria. else hated it. Still didn't comment after I yelled at you last week for not commenting, but... That's okay. Uh, You'll get to adventure. Better luck next time, I guess. We have faith in you. I don't. I've lost all well, faith. Well, I do. Um, I'd also like to thank Bartek for retweeting us. He's done that every week for a while now. Thanks. Yep. And for offering us uh, to go for ice cream. Oh, yeah, that's right. If yes. we're ever in Canada. Uh, but I've never been outside of the United States, so uh, that's probably not happening. I've never been outside of my living room. <laughs> but thanks, thanks for the thanks for the offer. Thanks. Mwah. Um, who have we got on? Uh, who have we got on YouTube? The usual suspects. We got stuff in thingification again. Thingamajig. Thanks. Uh, we also had Shinny Ryuk who offered us some uh, old comics. Mm. Very worth. Uh, yeah, Mary Worth, Mary Worth's family comics. Uh, Shiny Rick, uh, scanned those up for us, gave them to us, and, uh. Um, so, uh, look for those in the future. Yeah, can, can, can we talk about our favorite one? Our favorite one of the scans? Yes. Uh, it's a picture of Mary Worth looking very, very old. She's much younger now. And she says, it's true, a gossip is Satan's own sister, and they deserve a rebuke. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds pretty good. So thank you for that. Um, uh, and any, also, it, oh, and go ahead. also, that asshole Samuel K is is talking smack to some nice people in our comments. Now, I don't understand this guy. I don't like him at all. Eric, uh, I think that you're not giving him enough of a chance. Yeah. Uh, I think he's kind of a playful trickster, uh, kind of a puck-like figure in the for what it's worth uh, of voir. Um, yeah, but why is he being mean to this the Pilgrims guy? I don't under... I don't get it. Um, as far as I know, um, the Pilgrims is a dirty bird. Wait, what? Uh, I've, I've heard all kinds of horrible stuff about the Pilgrims why being a dirty bird. Why are you bad-mouthing our, our commenters? Uh, because, Eric, um, there's obviously a war going on between the Samuel K. and the Pilgrims. And yeah. we've got to pick a side, so I'm picking Samuel K. Yeah. And you can and I'm, pick. I'm picking the, the, the side of uh, of righteousness, of of justice. I'm on I'm on the pilgrim side. If you think that sniffing bicycle seats is righteous, then by by, by all accounts, go ahead. If you think cutting off the heads of a live goat and uh, chanting around a, a a fire outside and then throwing that goat head into a into an orphanage. It's an okay thing to do. Then you can be on Samuel K. side. Uh, yeah, I, as a matter good. of fact, I do think that is a good thing to do because, as you know, Eric, I'm a very devout Satanist. <laughs> 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 so that's fine with me. Um, if you like uh, somebody who smells his fingers anytime he touches his own genitals or butt, <laughs> then you can side with the pilgrims. Well, if you like the Nicolades. And getting caught in, caught in the rain, uh, well, then you can also join the pilgrims, because he's a pretty cool guy. I hate him. He's lost. I would like to officially announce that the pilgrims is one of the most dangerous and hated enemies we've ever had. I would like to say at this moment that Samuel K. should be shunned by everyone, including his own family, including his own loved ones, uh, any woodland creatures that come by and should run the other direction uh, and you know squirrels should hide their nuts because he's <laughs> probably going to eat them just to spite you I would like to say that out of the top five most evil people in history the most repugnant figures uh, number five Rasputin 
Number four, Attila the Hun. Number three, Mussolini. Number two, Hitler. Number one uh, is a tie between Osama bin Laden and the Pilgrims. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> that poor guy. I'm, I'm, I'm still on his side. All right. Um, <laughs> all right, let's end it. Let's do it. Let's get out of here. Uh, my name is Sam. And I am Eric. And remember, Diane, the owls are not what they seem. File that under A for advice worth taking. And that was your weekend, Mary Worth. For what it's worth.